वेलकम टू द न्यू वर्ल्ड गाइस डू यू हैव एनी काइंड ऑफ आइडिया अबाउट व्हाट इफ टू चार्जेस केम इन विसिनिटी यस आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट कूलम्स लॉ इन दिस वीडियो आई विल रीडिस्कवर कूलम्स लॉ सो प्लीज स्टे ट्यून टू दिस वीडियो अदरवाइज यू माय फ्रेंड मिस सम न्यू पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन कूलम्स लॉ Hello friends welcome to my channel logical electrical my name is Saurav today we will learn something new in our last lecture we actually discuss about what is a charge and also i have put forward you a question that what happened if two charges came in vicinity what happened then let's see what happened if let's say this is one of the charge of mine that's q1 i'm assuming its name and the it is separated with a distance and another charge is a q2 and they are are distance apart okay so r is quite small distance all right so my question was what happened then what should happen in this case generally to answer that question my question is actually answered by mr coulomb who actually tells me that if two charges came in vicinity then they will exert force upon each other how so that's the question so that force nature nature of that force actually completely depends upon nature of the charges if there is a opposite if do both charges are in like charges then the force will be repelling force if both are unlike charges then the force will be attractive force i think that's idea is about um, the benjamin franklin all right now the second question was asked by coulomb himself that what happened what is actually the magnitude of the force uh, what is the magnitude of the force in which they will actually attract or repel what is the magnitude of the force after very hard work he actually found new kind of result which is the, his result is actually known as today coulomb's law all right so what is this coulomb's law all right mr coulomb proposed this law his result so that's why it's actually named as coulomb's law so what is this coulomb's law statement of the coulomb law okay c o u l o m b s law what is the statement of coulomb's law don't memorize the statement of coulomb's law right it is quite simple you can just visualize what's happening and then write it down just okay so if i take a charge i'm just using the phenomena or the event that i have created there right if two charges of the distance between them square of the distance between them so this is the end of the statement so what actually the coulomb's law states that whenever if you if you place two charges let's say this and this charges and they are separated with some distance then the this is the case all right this is actually the event i have created here so in this case what happened charges are separated with a distance apart this is the case and this is the observation result then the they will attract or repel okay two possible cases are there attract or repel so the force let's say the force is f which is known as the force acting between them this is attracting or repelling it is known as generally the electrostatic force all right the electrostatic force is directly proportional to the product of the charges let's say its magnitude is q1 and its magnitude is q2 and is proportional to q1 times q2 okay and also it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so or this is r square is like that okay it is like that the force is directly proportional to q1 and q2 and inversely proportional to square of the distance now now we can easily say that by using the well, the laws of variation okay proportionality law okay so we get the thing that f is directly proportional to q1 times q2 divided by r square okay so this is the fund mathematical representation what i actually told you about in the words here in the statement 
all right so let's do some mathematics then okay <clears throat> we have just completed the statement of coulomb's law now we are actually heading to the mathematical representation of this law all right we get what we get if it's directly proportional i i have i think you have just write it down there write it down the complete statement all right f is directly proportional to the q1 times q2 divided by r square that is actually given by the coulomb's law all right so if we just remove this proportionality what we have to do we just simply add one extra constant all right k is the constant it is known as also the coulomb's constant now what is the value of this constant generally the value of this constant is about 1.4 pi epsilon 0 times q1 q2 divided by r square so this is actually the case now what is this pi we actually know about what is pi the value of pi is 3.14 that that's the that is the pi all right so now epsilon 0 is basically let's talk about epsilon first then epsilon 0 epsilon is actually known as the permittivity of a medium that actually depends upon the own nature or depends upon the medium all right this concept is very much bizarre concept in the field of electrostatics so i will explain this later in some later lectures i think it required a minimum two lectures to for complete this uh, the concept of the permittivity all right okay so zero so actually zero now permittivity is zero stands for the permittivity of the vacuum or air medium and it depends upon medium so vacuum or air or uh, is actually represented by epsilon zero now the so the value of epsilon zero is about 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter what is farad uh, we will introduce this uh, unit later also in some next few, few future lectures all right so this is the value of constant now if we put this equal this epsilon zero's value into this so we would get uh, this value as an 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton it is also known as the coulomb's constant value so it is unit it's new, newton a meter square for coulomb to inverse all right this is the unit and also you Uh, the coulomb uh, will actually glad to know about that by his honor the unit of charge is actually kept as a coulomb okay so this c stands for this coulomb all right so this is the actually the magnitude of the force coulomb finally did it he actually calculated what is the force act between these charges the electrostatic value of electrostatic force now we know that the force is a vector quantity and in this side this is a scalar quantity so that is the against the rule of the vector algebra so what we have to do now we just simply add one other another vector in this side then this is this equation will be completely approved by the vector algebra all right it can get the clearance from the vector algebra okay so let's get a vector form of the coulomb's law okay now we would actually this is the overall mathematical thing mathematical representation of the coulomb's law now we are discussing the vectorial uh, vectorical form of the coulomb's law all right let's start it now take a case of the same thing that is q1 charge here and at the distance there is a q2 charge and they are separated with a distance of r let's say okay now what have now think about that both actually now uh, what is actually the case case is the both q1 and q2 both will exert force upon one another all right so q1 will act force on q2 similarly q2 will also act force on q1 so i am just considering first case that q1 is dominating what happened so if q1 is actually dominating then it will exert a force upon q2 that force name is actually f of 1 2 so the force uh, the force acting on 2 by 1 okay this is actually represented as the force acting on 2 by the 
because I am considering Q1 as a dominating charge. So, and I am representing, so if the both are actually the same charge, what happened? So, it will get to repel. So, it will move in this direction, let's say. So, in this direction, I am actually considering a unit vector. The vector whose magnitude is generally 1 is considered as a unit vector. So, these unit vectors are represent the direction in which it will move. Okay. So, that due to this force, this unit vector is actually represent the direction in which that charge will move due to this force, due to action of this force. Alright. So, this is one of two. So, what happened from the Coulomb's law, we can easily write that there is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times q1 times q2 divided by r square. So, if it is a vector quantity and if of 1 of 2, then simply add r of 1 of 2. So, this is the vectorical representation of this force. So, what happened in a different case, let us say the case 2, when q2 is dominating over q1, what happened then? Then the q2 will exert force upon q1. Okay. So this is Q2 and this is Q1. Okay. Now the force act, the case is now reverse. Alright. So Q2 will act force upon Q1. So what is the magnitude of the force? Yeah, you get that right. That is 2 to 1 because it is acting because it's acting on 1 due to 2. Okay, first is due, second is acting upon. So, in this, so it, is, it will move also in this direction, the unit vector along this direction is actually f of 2 to 1. So, simply just substituting these values into this, you can easily determine the vector, vectorical expression for the q, for the force q 2 1. Okay, q 2 1, this is also 2 1. Now, in practical case, generally if two charges are same, then they will repel. The case is actually present to us. Now, what happened if two charges are unlike? Simply, they will attract each other. So, what happened then? So, mathematically, it has to be correct because it is actually practical case. If mathematically it is wrong, the, uh, the theory would be wrong. But the practical case never would be wrong because it is the fact is the science. Okay. So, what happened, let us say in this case only, let this case, the Q1 will be negative charge. So, what happened? Q1 if negative charge, then Q1 I am presenting this as a negative charge. So, what happened, the minus will be in this way, 4 pi epsilon 0 times Q1, Q2 divided by R square and R of 2 to 1, F to 1. Okay. Now, I am uh, replacing, I am putting this minus into this direction, okay, with r. So, what happened? There is a 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 times q1 times q2 divided by r square times minus r of 2 to 1. I am just placing the minus 2 in this here, okay. So, what we get? This. So, we know that according to the rules of the vector, there is a r21 is equals to minus r of 1 2 okay so other is also possible so r of 1 2 is equals to minus r of 2 1 can we write that just yes, reverse that case okay so r of 2 1 minus r of 2 1 is the value so i'm just putting this value okay so, if I put that value, what happened? 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 times q1 times q2 divided by r square and the r of 1 of 2. f of 2, 1, f of 2, 1. Okay. So, what happened? <coughs> 2, 1, 1, 2. Yeah, the sign changes. So, what happened? Generally, the force 2, 1 is acting on this direction. And R of 1, 2, we have seen that R of 1, 2 was acting on this direction. Okay. This is known as the cap. So, R of 2, 1. So, in this case, what happened? Due to this force, the action should be in this direction. R of 1, 2. So, what we get? We get that 
the force and the direction and the force and the in which direction the charge will move is actually opposes. So the charge moves in this direction. So the Q1 charge is actually moves in this direction. So what does it mean? So they mean they are coming closer. So they are attracting. So mathematics is right. So Coulomb's law is right. All right then. So this is the main vector, uh, vectorical form of the Coulomb's law, and you can easily see that this is this equation is completely sign sensitive. All right. Okay, I think that's all of for today. And in next lecture, we I am gonna talk about one flaws of Coulomb's law. Okay, one of the greatest flaws of Coulomb's law, and we will also correct that. So I think this is the end of our video. So if you simply like that video, then please. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Think basic. Think logical.